but obviously a tough week for Michigan State as they come in here. How have you guys been able to maybe support them or help them out? And are they already here? I saw like a report they might already be. They're on their way here. Okay. So that was you know one of the things we reached out to them right away uh, and said we would adjust uh, and do whatever they needed or thought was appropriate uh, for their needs. Uh, obviously, we sent our uh, wishes and prayers uh, to them because you know, they're part of our, you know, they're college hockey players, they're student athletes, they're students. Uh, so uh, I think when something like that happens, you're all affected. But then when you realize that the team you're going to play this weekend is dealing with it on a personal level because it happened to them, uh, there's a little bit more uh, concern and, and uh, awareness to the situation. So um, the, everything is going to go as scheduled based on. That's what they decided what was best for them, and we'll move forward and play the games in front of the center. So, so if they're getting here probably today, I, I assume one of the adjustments is probably just maybe giving them some ice time for. for yep, practice. yep, they will. They're going to come in. And sk- uh, they're not going to skate. They skated at home today, yeah, but tomorrow they'll have ice time here for them. Uh, and just get getting away from campus <coughs> probably a day early is probably the thing that they thought was right to do. And, can you take us back inside the locker room after Saturday's win and, you know, what was that like for the guys and for you to, to see them, you know, beat the rival number one team in the country? What was that moment Yeah, like? I mean, it was an exciting weekend for lots of different reasons. One, Friday's game was a great hockey game. We thought we played really, really well. Uh, we didn't win. Uh, you always worry when you play a team that that's good, that's that good. Uh, and you say, geez, we played great and we still lost. You know, how are we going to do better the next night to be able to find a way to win? And, and I was really proud of the guys on their mental approach to it, uh, the way they attacked from the same way we did on Friday. We got, you know, we got a big goal late in the first period to, to tie it, which I think was really, really important for us because had we played another good period like we did on Friday and came out of the trailing again, uh, I think it would have been a lot tougher to, to make the comeback. But I thought the second period, uh, the intensity and the, the, the liveliness and the excitement in the building, uh, certainly uh, we could feel it as a team on the bench. Uh, having the 73, 50-year reunion team here, having the 83 team, 40-year reunion here, uh, there was that excitement that we have somewhat lacked uh, in, in you know, the last couple months. And that energy uh, was exciting, and it certainly uh, was a, a typical Wisconsin, Minnesota, it doesn't matter what happened last night, doesn't matter who's in first place or last place, doesn't matter if you put those two teams on the ice, special hockey's going to happen. I thought both those games uh, were great college hockey games, and um, for the alumni to be part of it, come down in the locker room and celebrate not just their 50-year re- reunion, but celebrate a victory for our team. It was uh, exciting to do that with them together. You mentioned celebrating. Celebrating the seniors this weekend, what does this senior class maybe meant to you? Well, uh, first of all, we got the three fifth-year seniors in Goniak, Mersh, and Caulfield. They're all, they're all part of our captain group. Um, we can start with those guys of just being guys that uh, uh, have given a lot to this university, to the program, to me, to, our, to their teammates. Um, they are uh, phenomenal kids. They've been a great representation of both on the ice, off the ice, in the community, in the classroom. Uh, so they've set the standards for what college athletes and, and uh, Badger hockey players are supposed to be. So they'll be remembered for lots of different things for all they gave to us. And then the rest of the class, you know, Berlicki and Lindmark in particular, those two have um, another year or two to play because of COVID. Um, they both came off of uh, injuries that could have really sidetracked their careers and they both come back to have really, really good years for us. So they'll be part of our leadership moving forward. I'm assuming they're both going to come back for an additional year. Uh, and then Shea Diamond's getting a lot of attention for you know how he's handled his role. That's really special. I thought the piece that Speaks did on him um, that hit the internet yesterday is true representation of what he means to this team, this program, his teammates, uh, and how he's handled a depth role uh, where you know those are the guys that sometimes they have to be your most important player in the locker room because they control so much of the mood and spirit of your team. And, and uh, you got to give him a ton of credit. And I'm missing Jared, Jared Moe, who, who was the transfer that came in. He's done uh, a great job for us. Uh, he's in a position that he's probably going to have an opportunity to sign professionally. Uh, 
he does have another year left of eligibility. Uh, but there's a chance that, that this will be his uh, last weekend at home as well. So a special class, special group of kids. Like I said, classroom-wise, you'd be amazed at what they've been able to accomplish. Uh, they're all going to walk away here with degrees and, and uh, be set up for hopefully you know, long careers in hockey. But at some point, uh, they'll be able to take great advantage of the education that they took seriously while they were here. Well, I think there's, I really do, and, and, and I can say this Todd a lot about our team. The, the season has not gone, you know, uh, as well in the win loss column as we would like. But the one thing you can talk about uh, our team is that each and every day we show up, we're there for each other, we have fun with each other, we push each other, and we stay in the right frame of mind uh, to be positive and, and look forward to the opportunities that are in front of us instead of drawing the negativity of maybe some bad performances and not, you know, not getting the results we wanted. So from the character part of that group that we have, staff through the players, it's a great place to come in every day and, and know that each other has each other's back and, and they're there for one another. And that's the one thing you try to create and hope you have. That's the one thing I learned from the 73 team. They didn't win because they were the best team. They won because it was a team that cared the most about each other and they're going to do everything they could uh, to, to be the best that they could, and they became champions because of it. And they had, you know, 50-year reunion. 19 of the 21 guys in the championship game showed up in, in Madison, Wisconsin, uh, from all different places, just to celebrate and to give each other hugs again because they shared something special together. Our team might not win a national championship, but in 50 years, I would expect they would have the same type of reunion where they could hug each other and be grateful for what they gave to each other, and that those relationships would last a long. Can I get back to your seniors for a second? You're yes. shocked that yes. I asked this question. Did I forget one? Well, no, no you didn't forget Capo? one, but, but I, I, no, I, I you're wanted to. good, but I know where it's going. Right. I just want to ask about Brock. I remember that originally he had signed to go to Ohio State, and then Cole went along with him, and then they had second thoughts, and he became the head coach. And I remember seeing you and the Caulfield brothers on at, at a football game the day they visited, and you know, you were ecstatic because they were both coming. They were excited because they were coming. What has Brock in particular meant to this program, and what, what does he bring to the table every day? So, you know, I think when you think of the Caulfield brothers, most people are going to think of Cole from the standpoint that he got the goals and won the Hobie Baker and this and that. Uh, the guy that's been uh, so important to our program the second he got on campus is Brock because Brock is one of those kids that just does everything right every day day, every practice, every game. And he's been the example setter for our young players and that do come in here. Uh, his work ethic, his ability to lead, uh, his competitiveness, but just what he means as a kid to, uh, to coach and to understand that, you know, you can, I can't say enough great things about what he's meant for the program. So his, you know, when this day comes, you know, when this last game is played, it's going to be sad for me. Um, I think he'll have a lot to be proud of on, on what he's done here and accomplished here. Uh, but, I'm, you know, he doesn't get a lot of the recognition because of his brother. But I think he also enjoys that part of it as well because I know how proud he is of what Cole did. And I'm glad they got to experience it two years together. And, and Brock's going to go on and be successful. He's going to play pro hockey. Going to be successful there, and when he's done with pro hockey, whatever he decides to do, he's going to be successful there. But the one thing that I know, he'll always be part of our program. He'll always come back, and, and uh, uh, his heart will always be with us. And, and, uh, uh, but I, you know, I, you could you could keep talking about Brock for a long, long time on, on what he means to me and what he means to our program. So thank you for bringing him. I have, but I haven't talked to him. So I usually don't do that until the third place or tomorrow when the first guy's done. So you obviously you saw what uh, Kyle did on Saturday, what he did in the week on Friday. So he's in a good position to play one of the games this weekend. Uh, so he'll probably have him have him start on that one. The other one I was curious about, just from you know, going back to, to Saturday night, it just seemed like it was really 
physical. I mean, you, you take you can, the Luke Lemaster has yeah, kind of put an exclamation one. point on what yeah. the series was all about. So yeah. there, it's funny because Minnesota, uh, how great they are. I, I, the most impressive thing about them is how controlled they are and how they play. Uh, they, they don't get rattled. You could try to run them; it doesn't affect them. Uh, you, just, they just play a nice, calm game, and I think that's why they've been so consistent. Uh, you know, and, and it took us, you know, every ounce of energy on Saturday. I don't want to say we played a perfect game, but we played uh, as solid as we had to and needed to to give ourselves a chance to win really both nights. And you know, Saturday maybe we got a little bit of a break because we got the one disallowed goal on them on the two minute win. Thing. So that was a big momentum one. The other thing, like I said, that first goal late in the period was a big momentum one. There are different things in that game that happened. But I think the other really special thing about the weekend was we played hard, we played physical, and we didn't give the referees a whole lot of opportunities to put their arm up and, and put us in the box. We played discipline that way. Uh, I think it's because we skated so well. We were not out of position very often. And we did we? have to reach to, to pull guys down or scramble to get back in position. We were really solid defensively that way, and, and I think that was a big part of the weekend as well. How do you keep – oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, you know, when you went through film and, you know, the master's uh, check comes up, did you get a standing ovation? Or, you know, did, did, uh, <laughs> um, he got, I mean, a lot of guys recognized how hard he played. It wasn't just that hit. Yeah. There were lots of other things during that game, shot blocks, uh, played physical in corners, just played really solid. Defensively, so obviously when a big hit happens, that doesn't happen very often. Uh, and, you know, the excitement and the building at that point in the game. You know, we're, you know, we're in the lead in the third period. There's lots of energy in there, and all of a sudden, you know, there's a body check delivered like that. That added a lot of, you know, excitement to the game as well. I thought it was cool. <laughs> With the excitement of, of that win, how do you how do you keep it going now? How does that momentum continue to build. Well, it's important to me. You know, Michigan State's having a good year. They're playing for home ice advantage in the, in the playoffs. Uh, they beat us twice in their building. They thought we actually skated really well up there. We just weren't good enough around the net. So uh, it gives us a challenge uh, that you know we're going to face in the playoffs. We're going to face great goaltending, and we're going to have to find ways to score enough to win. So uh, I expect you know the energy and enthusiasm. Again, I, I give the alumni a lot of credit because. They came in after, they came in before, they came in the day before. That, uh, you know, to hear from those guys, you know, 50 years later, of what that experience meant back then, but more importantly, what it means to them today, I don't think our guys could actually understand what we try to teach them every day about the pride of being, uh, you know, a Badger, not just today, but when you're long gone from here. But for them to hear it from those guys, I think that, really was inspirational to our group uh, and it gives them a little bit more uh, I guess uh, focus on, on you know as we're winding down the season you realize especially for the seniors and the fifth year seniors Jesus might we're running out of time here let's take advantage of it and make the most of it and have so much pride in wearing the jersey as, as we finish our careers I think that having the alumni in for that to kind of reiterate that message was really important so Hopefully we, we can continue the momentum that we gained from having those guys.